Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi reporting for The Media Speaks. And friends, it is Christmas Eve. You want to know what? I am in the crabbiest mood. Tomorrow's going to be a good news show, I promise. Is it just me, or is everybody around you in like humbug mode. I don't mean the gifts and the presents and you don't have enough money. I mean, is there anybody at all that acknowledges the birth of Christ anymore? Or is it totally lost? Yes, I know he was not born on Christmas Day. Um, acknowledge anybody at all. If not, can you at least not destroy it for those of us that do? I'm at work today and there's people complaining that they're not open the night of Christmas Eve. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I got no kids. Don't you have any reverence for the entire traditional building blocks of American society? Do you care at all about taking something that is sacred to people and at the very least not being the biggest killjoy ever I just don't understand it. So I've put a show together, and tomorrow it's going to be all good news. I promise. It is. It's going to be all good news tomorrow. I haven't done a good news show in a long time. I'll be doing it tomorrow night. These are stories that I think universally, not just the problems in the U.S., but the problems over the course of the whole globe here. Um, I'm just going to cover these. This made me sick. Israel slams EU over plan to take Hamas off the terror list. Now, let's factor out whether or not you like Israel or not. Personally, I have nothing against Jews. I do not like Zionism. But, and there is a difference. But it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that because it, it, it's, it's, it's of no importance whatsoever if you like Israel. The point is that Hamas is the very epitome epitome of what terror is. They are notorious for killing children, blowing children up, blowing up innocent people. They are one of the most evil groups that have ever existed in the last, what, two, three hundred years. Despicable, rotten, evil, terroristic people. And that is true even if you hate Israel. That is true even if you li uh, love Israel. It is a correct view. It says Israel Prime Minister ben Benjamin Netanyahu slammed the European Union yesterday for removing Hamas from its terrorist list, calling it a staggering example of European hypocrisy and an indication that many of the continent have learned nothing from the Holocaust. I agree. I totally agree. I put down in a description for this video, taking Hamas off of the terror watch list is like taking Adolf Hitler off of the Nazi list. It is, from its very core in foundation, terroristic. The EU court order to remove Hamas from the EU terrorist list came the same day as a United Nations body in Europe delivered a stinging rebuke of Israel's settlement construction in the West Bank and called for Israel to be investigated for war crimes. I don't think Israel should have ever given up the Gaza Strip. They have got nothing but bombs sent to them since they did. And I'm not the only one that predicted that would happen. So did Michael Savage. And it's exactly what happened. They should have never given it up to begin with. It was a travesty. It says, today we witnessed a series of examples of European naivety and, may I add, hypocrisy, Netanyahu said before an audience of international journalists in Jerusalem. Do I like Netanyahu? Not really. They point to the spirit of appeasement in Europe, of the very forces that threaten Europe itself. Too many in Europe are calling on Israel to make concessions that would endanger not only the security of Israel, like giving up the Gaza Strip when they got bombed, but also, paradoxically, the security of Europe itself. Again, Europe is letting a terrorist group run free. It's not even listed as a terrorist group anymore. And it says Israel is, the, is in the forward position of European civilization. Israel is the bulwark, bulwark of European values. So you've got terrorists now getting credence and respectability in the European Union. 
maybe that's one of the reasons that evil is simply so extant over our in our world anymore that you can't have anything nice like Christmas. Is that what it is? I don't know. Max Slavo, uh, SHTF plan, mark of the beast, microchips trending to become essential keeper of passwords and digital currency. Everything people say is the mark of the beast. I have a tattoo. Oh my God, that's the mark of the beast. Usually when people are telling you what the mark is, they're way off mark. Because if you don't need it to buy and sell, and if it's not in some way forced upon you, then it is not the biblical mark of the beast. It might be the biblical mark of you don't like tattoos, but it has nothing to do with anything in the Bible. This, in fact, could. So let's look at the exact quote before we go talking about the mark of the beast. Let's see what it really says about it, if you will. Revelation 13, 16, 17. For those of you that are not Christians, for those of you that are atheists, for those of you who are, that are Buddhists or whatever, Satanists, it doesn't matter whether or not you believe in this. It's very obvious that the people that are in control of our world believe in these very dark things. So it doesn't matter whether you believe or not. It's important that you know what is believed because it is being used against you. And he causes, it says, the small and the great and the rich and the poor and the free man and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number in his name. Another good reason to buy gold and silver, by the way. Today, mandatory RFID chips for humans are still a distant, creepy possible future with a handful of tech-trendy volunteers trying to revolutionize the use of the icon of the Tractor Trace Society. Again, I have come out in favor of chipping the soldiers if they choose. That way are our contractors. It's, it's very unlikely that they would be able to take them if we start chipping the the soldiers and uh, that kind of thing. I'm not against that. Why? Because what did Revelations just say? If you don't need it to buy and to sell, then you're fine. I'm in favor of putting it on pets. I'm in favor of uh, anybody that doesn't have it forced upon them getting it done. That is not the mark of the beast. Why? Because you don't need it to buy and sell. It says many see microchips becoming not only mandatory under an Orwellian super surveillance state, but utterly indispensable to modern life, as dozens of hard-to-remember passwords, payments, and transactions for online business and leisure become not just commonplace, but overwhelming and pervasive. The chip might become too necessary not to take. How will you keep track of all of your online keys and how will you know, how will they know, excuse me, that you are you and that you are who you say that you are? It may someday soon become so essential to online data-driven life filled with authentications and location-based and secure user-specific applications that few will resist taking the chip despite the warnings and prophecy and by modern-day privacy advocates. Um, what would one way around this be? For our churches and our people of religious faith to set up their own um, stores. It may someday soon become... Oh, I read that, sorry. The number of brave new tech nerds are chipping themselves to go boldly into the biometric future, and the trend is becoming more popular. It says worldwide some 2,000 people have been chipped, and their number is growing. Alden Arden expects their number to grow considerably next year, particularly among, among tech nerds. Margin Weiss Meher, Meher, who has had two chips in his hand for a couple of weeks, says the pain was over after a couple of days. You can still feel them, but you forget that they are there. Again, this was chosen, but it becomes an issue when you have to get it, when it has to be done. And it looks like more and more they're going to work this into the internet in such a way that you won't be able to buy and sell without having to get it. It says wearables are quickly on their way to becoming consumer must-haves. In the latest Christmas gadget crazes, Google Glass has made its mark. Oh, it made its mark. I don't, it's a flop. Nobody has this. I have not seen a damn Google Glass anywhere. One of the places that I DJ at is a strip club. We are always on the lookout for Google Glass for obvious reasons. Guess what? Number of them that we have seen zero because nobody bought any. But anyway, it goes on to say smartwatches, bracelets, and fitness monitors 
are coming to the fore under a variety of brand names. Many are mini computers and can share data with a wide range of digital systems. But it won't be long before wearables become implantables. And again, it talks about them chipping newborns and that. I don't, I don't think that that's such a bad idea. But it says, today it is trendy, new, and surely useful. And they are much more likely to enter everyday life through the convenience of online life than through draconian mandatory compliance with something like Obamacare. Thought it could be conceivably come to pass as well. But for tomorrow, the writing is on the wall, and you have been warned. Before the microchip becomes the red line requirement, look for that word, with consequences for resisting, it will be a don't-be-left-behind staple of consumer life and that will be integrated, integrated into everyday life, perhaps with little notice. The, 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 uh, the big pink elephant in the room is also, what, because you get these chips in your hand, some criminal's not going to just cut your freaking hand off so he can get into your ATM? Of course he is! At least if it's on an ATM card, he doesn't really know where it is and can't prove that you own it. He'll take that hand off your body if he needs to. That's another reason. How about all of you that don't believe in any of the religious connotations? Think about it. They will cut your hand off and take it to the ATM. Uh, Infowars.com. Closed for murder. New Jersey tries to stem crime by imposing a business curfew. Again, why is it on my Bad News Christmas Eve show? Because, actually, Al Jazeera story was linked on Infowars. I'm sorry. Arthur Holland Michael wrote it. Um, it matters because it's in this show, I should say, because it's indicative of how the average man who, in this instance, owns a liquor store or owns a nightclub, they do their best only to have the government shut them down. When this is not going to stop crime, it is simply going to move the crime from businesses to homes, for one thing. But they're telling people what time they have to close their business. This is ridiculous. It says, Patterson's police force, which was cut by a third in 2011 due to budgetary shortfall, is unable to contain so much violence. I will tell you that we are under man, said police director Jerry Spizali, a decorated officer who was once shot in the line of duty, over the den of recruits exercising in the gymnasium at the Essex County Police Academy. Pause. First part of the paragraph. The police force was cut by a third in 2011. End of the paragraph. Over the din of recruits exercising in a gymnasium. Why are they bringing in recruits if they just laid off police officers, for one thing? Why am I the only person that noticed that in the paragraph? That's why you tune in. So we need to think outside the box. Yeah, we need to think how to tell people how to run their own businesses. This past summer, amid a near-weekly report of fatal violent incidents, Patterson's city council approved an unusual policy that it hopes would dramatically cut violence without the city having to significantly expand its policing. A curfew. Not for people, but for businesses. They all need to band together and say, up yours, we ain't doing it. And we're not paying any fines, and we're not closing our damn business down. You can put us all in jail if you got the room. Then you can give the whole neighborhood to the thugs. Under the ordinance, which was implemented just days before Bug's death, 420 businesses and 15 designated hotspots around the city must be shuttered by midnight or else face fines of $2,000. Refuse to pay it in mass. This isn't the first business curfew in the U.S. Camden and Jersey City have limited curfews for businesses in certain areas. But Patterson's Ordinance, which targets areas throughout the city and only exempts drive through establishments, is more extensive. Outside of New Jersey, business curfews are a rare policy nowadays. Now, pause. Let's remember that the government should not be allowed to tell any business when they open and when they close. There is no legal justification for telling a bar that they have to quit selling alcohol at 2.30, but most cities do it all the time. Do you know that it's absolute BS? Why do they get to tell you how to run your business? Why is that? Let me ask you another question. 
you'll say, well, Sam, if we don't have all these rules and all this red tape, if, if a liquor license doesn't cost $100,000, then, you know, we can't prove that these places aren't poisoning people. Let me tell you something. You can look this up. Back in Al Capone's day, when they had speakeasies, they made gin in a bathtub. If they poisoned somebody, do you think anybody ever went back to their speakeasy or did it close? And do you think they went to jail for poisoning somebody? They did. And if they managed not to, nobody went to that speakeasy anymore. Guess what happened to the speakeasies that weren't poisoning people? They had the big band legends, uh, Louis Armstrong. He was like the Metallica of his day. Louis Armstrong played there in speakeasies. So don't tell me that the government needs to oversee something to make it safe. That's utter BS. It says, in theory, the curfew will cut crime by emptying Patterson Street, creating a, a spiesel point in a situation where people don't have havens in which to hide. With businesses closed, he said, there's not a logical reason for somebody to be hanging out there, so it is easier for police to identify people who don't belong. So, you know, anybody walking down the street, of course, now can be bothered. Some residents and business owners have welcomed the ordinance. These things have been going on Patterson for the last 15 years. I think it's a good idea, said Peter Arachia. Uh, Arachia? A-C-H-A-R-Y-A. -A. Go for it. Who owns Florida Drugs and Liquor, a pharmacy on Broadway, a block away from a gas station where a shooting last year ended in the death of two sales clerks? Well, let me ask you a question. Why don't you have bulletproof proof glass in the store if it's that bad of a place? Guess what? Bulletproof glass, clerk lives. No bulletproof glass, clerk, that clerk dies. Not that hard. Others are displeased. I would hope so. It says one of the curfew hotspots, which was designated based on crime statistics from the past two years, is Straight Street, a busy, or on the straight and narrow, a busy thoroughfare with several bars, liquor stores, restaurants, and an elementary school. Might I add, people that paid through the nose for the right, which shouldn't have even had to be paid for, of opening their bar, of getting their liquor license for their bar and their store. Perfectly legal restaurants that are going through all the red tape that they shouldn't even have to do for reasons I just stated a minute ago. It has, been, it has seen a number of violent incidents, including the murder of an off-duty police officer in 2011. On a recent Friday afternoon, two friends, Angel and Jose, said they feel less safe on straight street since the ordinance took effect. Not more safe. The men were relaxing on bar stools between games of pool at Moe's Bar and Liquor, located at a busy intersection of Straight Street and Park Avenue, which is another troubled street. It says a block full of people, they said, is less menacing than a deserted one. Common sense. It's messing everything up, said Angel. Jose said the streets are empty, so it's more dangerous. On November 23rd, one week after the pair met at Moe's to blow off steam and talk about the curfew, a 19-year-old man was shot and killed at 3.40 a.m. in the nearby 4th Ward. Of course, you know, you can't have guns in the, uh, in the liquor establishment, so only the criminals bring the guns in. Therefore, an armed society is a polite society. But no, they, 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 don't, they don't let you have uh, uh, your firearm in a bar, so of course now that everybody knows you go to the bar with a firearm and you can rob the whole place. It says, nor does the curfew address crime at other times of the day, they said. A couple of days ago, I saw someone get robbed and knocked out in broad daylight at that very intersection, said Jose. So you mean sacking the businesses isn't helping? Why are we libertarian? We are libertarian because it's right. Outside on the sidewalk, a couple of sullen-looking men smoked cigarettes as children carrying backpacks walked and skipped past on their way home from the nearby elementary school. The next day, on November 15th, a man was shot in an attempted murder at 4.30 p.m., two blocks from Moe's. So it must have been Moe's fault, right? Residents across the town echoed Jose's sentiment. Criminals don't have operating hours. So what's the point, said the owner of a grocery store located a few blocks from the Mayo, a bar. Both Bug and Rincon were killed outside of the curfew hours. And it talks about all of the businesses that are going to be going out of uh, business because they can't afford this. Um, it's costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and for what? 
For what? For something that doesn't work. For something that cuts into your freedom. What is the solution? The solution is easy, friends. The solution is to get rid of these rules and regulations. Let the bar owners hire their own armed bouncers with a concealed carry license and let them police the bar the way they would have before I was a twinkle in my daddy's eye. You know what? My uh, good story here real quick. My dad, God rest his soul, um, was with a very abusive stepfather. And uh, this stepfather used to love to get into fights in bars. And he used to try to rip people's noses off and brag about how he hurts people. He was a rotten person. Anyway, um, he didn't do this in one bar because the owner had a bat. And he said, I'll take your head off. And if you start to win the fight, I'll shoot you dead. Guess what? There were no police in there going, you violated his rights. You know what? The scum didn't fight in that bar. You let bar owners take care of their own bar that they have put their blood, sweat, and tears into. And a lot of times they're based on themes like if I ever get one, it's going to be very electronic, underground, music-based. They care about that establishment. It is something that they have dreamt about forever. They will protect it. They don't need the government. They just need the government to move. Um, guys, another reason maybe everybody is so bummed out this year. Listen to this. One in five millennials live in poverty, the Census Bureau says. One in five young adults ages 18 to 34 years old live in poverty, according to data from the U.S. Census Bureau. You know what? I have a lot of friends in that age group. A lot of friends. Cannot find a job anywhere. Do I know they're putting in applications? They're putting in applications everywhere. People with degrees cannot get a job. Um, I know someone listening to the show is in that situation. Feel free to comment and if you want to. I'm not going to put your information out there, but I'm saying I see it all the time. Um, when I work in a strip club, uh, there are girls that are really good dancers, and you can tell that that's what they do. And then there are girls that are just doing it because there are no other jobs anywhere whatsoever. You can't even get a job at, at our cash register where I live. There are no jobs. Well, there you go, friends. One in five millennials live in poverty. So why don't we keep outsourcing? Why don't we keep sending all of our jobs to other countries? And why don't we keep blaming the people who want minimum wage raised when the truth is we wouldn't even need a minimum wage if we haven't sent our jobs away? It's awful. I mean, there's nothing else you can say about it. 65% of young adults are employed, down from 69 in 1980. Uh, it, it gets worse and worse and worse. It says in 1990, the percentage climbed to 70.6%. So there you go. That's, that's, that's where we are right now. Maybe that's why everybody has this frown on their face and nobody can care about anything except how expensive the Christmas present is. It doesn't mean anything else to a growing number of people. And I know the majority of people out there are just like me. They love Christmas. But we do know that it's going down, 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 down. And the problem isn't so much whether you're a Christian or not. I just said I'm libertarian. You can worship the mighty mice men that live on the moon made out of green cheese for all I care. And I will support your right to do it. But when you lose everything that a nation was built on that was great, pretty soon you no longer have a great nation. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. i got three stories left. Uh, tomorrow, nothing but a good news story. It's all, all Christmas, I promise. Um, let me say real quick, though, you're going to want to check out the Arcadia Grill. You probably don't have a lot of money, especially if you live where I just told you. I'm in Canton, Ohio. Well, you don't have to have a lot of money. And you can get fed amazing. Go to the Arcadia Grill. They are located on Court Avenue in downtown Canton. You're going to get some of the best food that you have ever eaten. And you're also going to find out that they're at a reasonable price that you never, ever would have dreamt. It's the Arcadia Grill on Court Avenue. If you're anywhere near Canton, Ohio, drive here, go there, and enjoy a wonderful meal. All right, guys, three left. This one brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. If you like reading and you watch this show, so you're probably smarter than the average Kesha fan, Check out Mike McLaughlin. Look on Facebook.com. Let him know you heard about his writings from me at Correct Views. And uh, get ready to really be impressed by what you read. Friends, Zero Hedge, of Belarus in full-blown hyperinflation, panic blocks news, online stores, bans all FX trading for two years. Do you realize they are preventing people from getting their money out of banks before Christmas, mere days before Christmas, to prevent a bank run. They're 
stopping online stores from selling things on Christmas week. Why might that be? Because you should never put your money into a bank. How can you live without banks? Glad you ask. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, look up, guess what the name is. Come on. How to Live Without Banks. And it's free. It's free. I'm not selling anything on it. It's a free article. Right there. I lay out in like 10 minutes of reading how you can live without banks. But I get my check cashed in a bank. I explain that too. So go look it up. Because if you don't, they've done it to Cyprus. They've done it to uh, Belarus is doing it. Do you think it's not going to ever happen in America that they're not going to stop you from getting your money out of these banks? And they're going to call it a haircut. You need to have a bail-in because our economy crashed due to bad central banking. It says, we have to do something with these Belarusian rubles, exclaims one Belarusian as she shops to turn worthless rubles into physical assets. As AFP reports, the Belarusian currency currency was dragged down by the slide of the Russian ruble last week, leading authorities to impose draconian measures, forbid price increases even for imported goods. Pause. So they're telling people how much they're allowed to sell things for. Warn people against panic. Yeah, why would you panic except for the fact that the government's uh, telling you you can't have your money and they're telling you how much you can charge? Why, why, why would you panic? Now, however, in an effort to stem the flood of hyperinflating domestic prices, authorities have blocked online stores and news websites to stop the run on banks and shops as people scramble to secure their savings. Well, what can you do? You can send them this show because in many instances, since it's such a small show, their servers don't filter me. One of the blocked news websites noted uh, it looks like the authorities want to turn light panic over to the full fall of the Belarusian ruble into a real one. Um, listen to this. Belarus blocked online stores and news websites Sunday in an apparent attempt to stop a run on banks. That means get your own money out of a bank because you don't trust the economy. They're not letting you do that. But it's my money. Yeah, they're taking it. It says, and also, uh, they don't want shops as people rush to secure their savings. So they're not in charge of their own savings if they're in a bank. How do you live without banks? Look it up. In a statement Sunday, a Bella Pan News Company, which runs a popular independent news website, bellapan.by and navyny.by, said the sites were blocked Saturday without warning. Well, good. Send uh, this show to the Belarusians. Clearly, the decision to block the IP addresses could only be taken by the authorities because in Belarus, the government has a monopoly over providing IPs. Oh, so you mean the government having a monopoly over internet providers is a bad thing? Why, isn't that what Obama has been wanting here? Listen to this. Because in Belarus, the government has a monopoly on providing IPs. Therefore, do not let the government have a monopoly on providing IPs. Why? Because they're using it to steal your money and block the news about it. It lists other websites that were blocked. I'm going to bore you to death. You're not in Belarus. It says the blockage started on December 19th when the government announced that purchases of foreign currency would be taxed 30%. So now they're telling you what you can buy, not only how much you can sell something for and told all exporters to convert half of their foreign revenues into the local currency. So now they're telling you what money you're allowed to own and how much of it you have to own. Looks like the authorities want to turn light panic into the fall, into a real one. I read that. They listed it twice. So this is another reason to not put your money into a bank. All right, guys, king5.com. Two more stories to get to. The dumb of the day is next. Here we go. Washington pay-by-mile pilot program approval expected. This is the biggest ripoff ever, people. Do not... What they did is they sold you a bill of goods. Let me tell you what they did. First of all, man is not warming the planet. Man-made global warming is a lie. But they convinced you of this lie. And then they went ahead and said you should buy these cars, which use less gas. So you did. 
You bought into their lie and you did. They told you you were going to save money when you did it, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Did you save any money? Well, maybe. Except for the fact now they've lost revenue in uh, people not buying enough gas, therefore not paying taxes. So they want to tax you another way. In other words, you paid more for the car that would save you money in the long run, and now they're going to tax you by mile to get that money back so you bought the more expensive car for nothing. The Washington State Transportation Commission is expected to approve a pilot project designed to charge drivers for every mile they travel on public roads. Uh, I, well, you know, how do you prevent that? You need about now half a million people in that state to all break their odometers and refuse to answer to the government for it. A road usage charge would eventually replace the gas tax in Washington State, which has brought in less revenue with more hybrid and electric vehicles using less gas, like they told you to do. So it says our gas tax as a revenue source is running out. So now they need to think, again, outside the box. Don't you love that? What's that mean? It means taxing you by the mile that you drive. It says if lawmakers approve the changeover, testing under a pilot program would begin in 2016. For, for implementation would begin in 2018. People in Washington, if you let this happen, I swear to God, you are some of the dumbest people in the country. Guys, that brings us to the dumdy of the day. Dumdy, dumdy, dumdy. And Mikhail Thalen, he always finds me dumdies. Prisonplanet.com. Parents threatened by CPS. Sieg Heil for letting children play alone at Neighborhood Park. Yes, it's the second time. You're, Sam, you're repeating yourself. You've reported on this before. No, this is another one. A dumdy of the day for the uh, CPS uh, Nazis here in Montgomery County. Uh, why do I do these? Because I want you listening to this to go ahead and call the Montgomery County Child Welfare Services and let them know that what they're doing is wrong. It's an overreach. They need to get the hell out of their family's private business. A Maryland family is being threatened by Child Protective Services for allowing their two children to play alone in a neighborhood park. Well, yeah, you know, because their parents pay taxes, why should they be allowed to use the park? The incident initially began last November. 